Ventilators constantly monitor many machine and patient-related variables such as airway pressure and respiratory rate. There is an alarm for almost everything. Unfortunately, since these alarms are so common, many caregivers either ignore them or reflexively silence them through the user interface. While it is true that some alarms are of little or no significance, others may indicate an important and potentially life-threatening problem. This is why it is essential that individuals caring for mechanically ventilated patients be able to identify the reason for every alarm and understand its causes and implications. If an alarm occurs, the caregiver should always evaluate the patient before checking the ventilator. Make sure the patient is still connected to the ventilator and all circuits and tubing are tightly connected and are not kinked or blocked in any way. Once an alarm sounds, you can determine its meaning and significance by looking at the user interface. Most ventilators display the reason for the current alarm. Once the specific alarm is identified, a determination needs to be made regarding its potential cause. Then the issue needs to be quickly and accurately diagnosed and the problem must be corrected. The most common cause of a high airway pressure alarm is a spike in airway pressure produced when a patient coughs. This is almost always self-limited and requires no intervention. Other causes of high airway pressure include kinks in the patient circuit, water in the ventilator circuit, an increase in mucus or thicker mucus which may block the airway, and gagging. A low airway pressure alarm is triggered whenever airway pressure falls below a preset low pressure limit. This is much less common than a high pressure alarm. This often occurs when there's a large leak in the ventilator circuit which prevents the preset airway pressure from being reached. This most often occurs when the ventilator circuit becomes disconnected from the endotracheal or tracheostomy tube. Other causes for low airway pressure include inadequate inflation of the tracheostomy tube cuff, a poor fitting non-invasive mask, nasal pillows or prongs, loose circuit and tubing connections, and the patient demands higher levels of air than the ventilator is putting out. This alarm is triggered when the patient's respiratory rate exceeds a high rate limit which is set on the machine. The most common cause of having a high respiratory rate alarm is the patient is doing an energy demanding task such as transferring into or out of a wheelchair or lifting a heavy object. Other causes for having a high respiratory rate include the patient is in pain, is agitated, or is fatigued. If the patient is in respiratory distress and has a high respiratory rate, the tracheostomy tube may be clogged. If the tracheostomy tube is clogged with mucus, little air is being delivered to the lungs. The patient may start breathing faster to compensate for the lack of air. To fix this situation, remove the inner cannula from the tracheostomy tube. Another solution is to suction the lungs. If suctioning or removing the inner cannula does not correct the alarm, a tracheostomy tube exchange may be needed. A high respiratory rate may also indicate a more serious health issue. If the patient is in respiratory distress and removing the inner cannula, suctioning the lungs and changing out the tracheostomy tube does not resolve the high respiratory rate, please seek immediate medical attention. Most ventilators have a set number of breaths which will automatically be delivered even if the person stops breathing. So, a low respiratory rate alarm will not be an issue. However, with spontaneous ventilation, there may be no preset number of breaths being given by the machine. If the machine displays a low respiratory rate alarm, seek immediate medical attention. The person is not breathing fast enough to sustain his breathing needs. Low respiratory rates occur most frequently in sedated patients and people with impaired neuromuscular function. A low tidal volume alarm frequently happens after a person coughs or sneezes. A low tidal volume alarm will also be triggered by a large leak in the ventilator circuit. 
high expiratory volume alarms may indicate a high respiratory rate or an increased demand for air due to pain, anxiety, or improper ventilator settings. Low expiratory volume alarms are typically caused by air leaks. High inspiratory volume alarms may indicate a leak or a disconnect in the ventilator circuit. It may also be caused from a high respiratory rate or an increased demand for air due to pain, anxiety, or improper ventilator settings. Low inspiratory volume alarms may be caused by mucus plugging the tracheostomy tube, a need for suctioning, tracheostomy tube obstruction, a slow respiratory rate, or shallow breathing. When the ventilator is disconnected from its electrical power source, the ventilator will display an alarm indicating the loss of AC power. The ventilator will automatically switch over to battery power. The length of time the ventilator can run on battery will vary based on the make and model of the ventilator. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.